Hey guys, let's go to the part two, the second video about the history of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If you didn't watch the first one, come back and watch. And before we start, I want to say thank you to my sponsor, Spider Korea. And so let's pick up from the, the, the last video. So the last video was talking about Gendai Budo and Koryu uh, schools. And before we start talking, and before we, we come back to the history, I want to explain the difference between the two ways of doing martial arts. So basically the Koryu schools are the old schools, the traditional ones of martial arts in Japan. The, the main focus in is the military training and, and is to win, you know, the battle or the fight or, or something like that. So uh exam examples of that are the jujutsu which is the gentle art or the the gentle technique the kenjutsu, kenjutsu the sword techniques uh sojutsu the uh, spear uh, art and kyujutsu bow and arrow art and even hojutsu which is the fire guns art and in the other hand, the Gendai Budo schools are the modern schools of martial arts in Japan. They start to, uh, they, they, the first Gendai Budos, they start after the Meiji Restoration in the end of 19th century. And their main focus are not just the martial arts anymore, but it's the personal development, the self-improvement, and, and using the martial art as a tool for that. So many of these schools, they also, they go towards sports, not just uh, martial arts, but also they, you know, they create a set of rules and they start to become sports. Uh, examples of those schools are the Judo, so the old Jujutsu became Judo, the old Kenjutsu became Kendo, Yaido, Kyudo, Aikido, Karate Do, and so on. And also these schools, they start to use the Do in the end, because Do means the way, and the way is, is like in, in, a, in a spiritual uh, sense. And another important thing those schools, the Gendai Budo schools do, uh, they start the, the system of rankings. So they start with cues and dance. Cues are like the, the colors, the, the belt colors and these kind of things. And dance is after you get the, the black belt, we, you start to get the dance. And that's different from the previous schools, the, the Koryu Jujutsu, they didn't have this kind of rankings. You always, you, you would, train and after you know many years of training you want to get you would get a certificate that you were able to to teach the techniques of that school so that's one of the difference now with the Gendai Budo they now they they have this established hankings and coming back now to Jigoro Kano that we that we start to talk in the last video he born in 1860 and he starts to train Koryu Jujutsu at 16 years old. He trained many styles of Koryu Jujutsu, but he became expert in three styles, Tenjin, Shinyo Ryu, and Kito Ryu. And Kano believes that Jujutsu is a cultural legacy, and, but he also believes that he needs to change uh, his focus. He needs to be teaching. He needs to teach uh, the martial arts and the jujutsu as a mean of education, not just a martial art, but also for develop the physical development and, and self-improvement. So in 1882, Kano opened his schools, the Kodokan Judo, and to get a better reputation uh, than the other martial arts, Kodokan, they start to build uh, etki code. So, for instance, they forbid fights for money, and also they they start to put a curriculum to organize better the the the, the system, the Kodoka system. the The idea, the the ideal of Kano 
was, like I said before, using the, the fight tournament as a, a way of self-improvement, not just uh, a fight training. That's why he used the Do instead of Jutsu in the end of the world. And a, a very important thing is that Jigoro Kano, he emphasized very much a method of training uh, called Handori. So Handori is what we call, uh, spa, what we, we, we know as sparring or in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Hola and, or, or, you know, the, the actual uh, sparring. And many, and why this is different? Because many traditional schools, the Jiu-Jitsu schools in that time, they were more, their training were more uh, emphasized on kata, Cut is the prearranged forms that I know what my partner will do and he knows how I'm going to defend. So we pretty much cooperate with no resistance or not too much resistance. And Kano, he believes that it's important to use full power and train with a, a resistance in order to be a fit, a, effective as a martial arts and, and to, in order to really uh, understand if the technique works or not. But the problem is that many of these schools, they have what we, the so-called like deadly movements or deadly techniques. And that's why they use more kata because they don't wanna uh, put the students in danger. And what Kano realized that is he could take out these really danger techniques and allowed in the Handori, the sparring, just the safe techniques. And when we say safe techniques, doesn't mean that it's not effective because, for instance, a choke, it's a very safe technique because if I stop when the, my, my partner taps, nothing's going to happen and we can start training again. But it's a very dangerous technique if you don't stop. So it's a technique that you can use with full power in, in a sparring session without any risk of hurt my partner. And... Of course, you know, many other schools, they use a lot of Handori, but most of them in that time, they are more focused on kata training and prearranged forms than in Handori training. And that's what Kano starts to, to change. And the, the result of that is Kano starts to realize that the student that trains with real resistance even if he trained with just safe techniques, he will be much more efficient in a real fight than a student who train with all those deadly techniques, but without uh, real resistance. And soon the Kodokan established uh, as one of the most important Jujutsu schools in Tokyo, and they start to get challenged for many traditional Jujutsu, Koryu Jujutsu schools, and they always they are winning uh, very easy this challenge. The Kodokan School and Jigoro Kano and his, stu his students are winning easy this, this challenge. And it's important to remember that this challenge, Jigoro Kano, of course, he wants to uh, leave that violent and, and, and image that Jujutsu had. So he put some rules to this challenge and pretty much it's a grappling match. Uh, without punches and kicks, but you can win the fight by throwing a perfect throw or a pin or even a submission. And judo is doing pretty well. The Kodokan judo is doing pretty well against all these uh, schools that I challenge in. And finally, in 1886, the uh, Tokyo Police they organized a big championship, a challenge to decide which style would be teach in their facilities in the police uh, for the police officers and in 15 fights the kodokan guys they win 13 and they draw two fights and of course after this 1886 championship uh, judo kodokan become the most uh, famous jujutsu school in japan and many people from other schools, other Jujutsu schools, they move and they start to train in Kodokan. Around 1896, 1896, 
a very important student, you know, a crucial student that we're going to talk later, Mitsui Maeda, he started to training at Kodokan. And also, at the same time, in the end of uh, 19th century, Kodokan is challenged by Batai Montanabe, a professor of a school, a small school of Jujutsu named Fuzen Hyu. These two facts, the Maeda starting training at Kodokan and the Tanabe from Fuzen Hyu challenge, they would change forever the history of Judo Kodokan and the traditional Jujutsu. And of course, this will have a lot of impact later on in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu histories. But this we're going to talk in the next video. So 